Hi everyone, this is Joni from Process OPC. In this presentation, I will uh, talk about the ITOT convergence with uh, OPC UA. Let's first look at the uh, traditional industrial application landscape, where we have these uh, different applications that are probably mostly familiar to you. Uh, we have the ERP systems, uh, enterprise resource planning, and uh, manufacturing execution systems that uh, typically reside in the IT network, where we have uh, the high level of production control. And these are typically connected to the internet, so uh, the security of this network is, is not as, as uh, good as it is on the lower OT network, where we have this uh, low level production control from the SCADA applications and PLCs, ECS systems. And we typically also have the process historians in this uh, scenario. So this network is typically secured from the internet because we don't want to get intruders from the uh, in internet to the, uh, to the production control. And now we have uh, coming up these new uh, requirements that we want to, uh, to use applications in the cloud and deliver data securely from the production to the cloud. And for those purposes, we've seen a uh, group of applications called edge gateways uh, entering the market in the recent times. Security uh, within this architecture is defined by keeping these networks uh, securely separated. And uh, to improve uh, that, we can uh, have this kind of demilitarized zones in between these networks, and uh, then we can take all the communications through a uh, gateway in between to ensure that uh, nothing, nothing can intrude the operation network especially. Now, OPC UA communication fits uh, very well with this kind of uh, scenario. We have the traditional client-server communication being established uh, for a long time. And it's uh, especially suitable for process monitoring, uh, production control, and even for the production orchestration, where it's been very popular between the uh, PLC, SCADA, MES systems. And uh, also, uh, OPC UA works very well between the ERP and MES systems, although it hasn't been uh, the sweet spot so far. Uh, but we have already a lot of applications uh, taking advantage of OPC UA on that level too. Now we have the new uh, tux up flavor of OPC UA being introduced, and uh, it has two different application areas. First one is the field level, and, and we have the new OPC UA field exchange uh, specification that is uh, defining more details on, uh, on how it's also combined with, uh, with the safety and motion control requirements, for example, and, and run in a deterministic network. Uh, here we have the pops up UDP flavor that is uh, providing this functionality. But uh, remember, the client server technology is still used in, in FX as well very much. Uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, pops up MQTT protocol, which is uh, the best suitable uh, for delivery data securely to the cloud systems in a standard way. And uh, then I would uh, like to mention also that uh, MQTT is uh, getting more and more popular in this kind of information level communication, which I call uh, InfoBus in my presentation. A little bit more about that in a couple of minutes. But uh, if we look at the trends uh, in smart manufacturing, uh, we've basically still very much in this industry 3.0 world with this hierarchical communication and with the client server model that we've been uh, using. But uh, we are moving towards the industry 4.0 architecture where everything is connected to everything, basically. And uh, the publisher subscriber model works much better for, for these purposes. So let me describe this idea of the InfoBus. Uh, this is the terminology that I've, I've just uh, created for this presentation. Uh, I don't 
to really see any existing uh, name for this, but uh, but this could be one uh, one candidate. In the case that everything is connected to everything, we don't really want to configure all these uh, connections between uh, all the components. We're getting more devices uh, to the communication, more machines, more systems, more applications, and overall more and more uh, connections. So the uh, architecture could be defined that we have just a, a common communication bus uh, where everything is, is connecting to. And in practice, this can be ac accomplished uh, with an MQTT broker uh, where all the applications publish their data. And then they can also uh, subscribe to all the data that they find from the other applications that they need. And uh, this is a very flexible way to do that. And OPC UA uh, pops up MQTT can uh, help establishing this in a standard way by standardizing the message formats, the payload of the messages, uh, the uh, topic trees, uh, how the data is organized in the MQTT broker, and also the uh, how the uh, information models are used in this context. This work is uh, is ongoing at the moment, and and we will uh, hopefully get uh, get good uh, alternative specifications for those coming up. And uh, all of these can then enable new use cases. Uh, we already have analytics applications, visualization applications, and so on and so on. But uh, but now uh, it will be much easier to connect new uh, systems to this communication because you don't need to make it connected to everything, just connect it to the uh, common communication bus. So, as a summary, OPC UA is very well designed for both IT and OT communication. Uh, the client server works in traditional hierarchical communication the best. The publisher subscriber is set for new requirements, and uh, we see that uh, the IT and OT networks are getting uh, more and more connected and, and mixed up. We have the cloud connectivity uh, requirement already. We have new requirements for the field level communication, and uh, this info bus can uh, like merge the IT and OT securely together in future. And security is always available, which is very, very important in all communications, especially when we when we do this kind of merging of, of the different uh, network segments. Yeah, so with this, I, I hope that you got a good idea how OPC UA can help you in your future uh, requirements and uh, and your future architecture for your for your own production site. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Joni from Process OPC. In this uh, presentation, I will uh, explain you the differences between the OPC UA client server and uh, publisher subscriber communication. So, in the uh, traditional uh, OPC UA client server, uh, we are talking about direct one to one connections between the applications. The other one acts as a server, the other one acts as a client. And uh, the major thing here is that uh, these connections are always session based, and the session has uh, a lot of uh, advantages, like we can authenticate uh, the applications with each other and then all the uh, further. Uh, communication, we know who is who is communicating with who. Whereas in the new publisher subscriber model, pops up as we call it, uh, we're talking about the many to many connection. And uh, here the idea is that all the participants, publishers and subscribers, they connect to a common network. And uh, we have two varieties. We have the UDP variety of the pops up where uh, the network it's a standard Ethernet network, and uh, the publishers publish data using UDP broadcasts. And the subscribers can 
just listen. Everybody gets all the all the broadcasted messages, and they they can pick up what they what they want from that. And then we have the other uh, alternative, the MQTT uh, pops up, and uh, there we're using an MQTT broker, which kind of acts as a network or common uh, server actually, where all the components connect. The publishers and the subscribers both connect to the MQTT broker, and that one uh, delivers all the published messages to all the subscribers. Now, uh, if we look at the data changes and event notifications, which is the basic data and the monitoring that uh, that the applications do within each other, we already have this established in the client server communication through also subscriptions. And uh, the issue there is that uh, these subscriptions are uh, defined separately for each client. It's a good thing that the client, every client can define what they want from the server, but uh, the servers need to take care of all the clients separately. So when we add another server, we get another set of uh, subscriptions, and if we get more clients, the servers just get a bit uh, loaded with uh, handling all the all the connections to the clients. Whereas in the PubSub model, uh, Publishing is per publisher, so the publisher doesn't need to care how many listeners it has. It just publishes its own data uh, to the network. And that gets uh, delivered to the subscribers. And we have another publisher and that publishes uh, to the same network and it also gets uh, published to all the all the subscribers. The main difference here is that the configuration is then done on the publisher and the subscribers cannot like define anything specific for themselves. So they depend on dependent on what has already been defined in the publisher to be sent to the network. So these are the basic uh, differences between these, these two models. Now the additional uh, difference uh, and advantage of the client server technology is that we have these uh, additional uh, services that are available in the server and together with the uh, data changes, I would say these uh, make up the bi-directional uh, services. But here we're talking about the ability to browse the server address space to find out what kind of uh, network of, of data the server has available, what are all the tags there, for example, to discover the, the data available and uh, also to discover the information models that the, that the server supports. The clients can also read, write, call methods, and do history reads to the servers. And these are basically missing from the pops up, but uh, we have now uh, actions coming up, which are more or less methods, method calls. And we have ways to uh, work up with information models with the pops up coming up. Security. Uh, is available in all scenarios, but, uh, but it's a little bit different. As well, in the client server model, we have the security on three different layers. We have the transport level, application level, and user level security. In the transport level, uh, we can encrypt all the messages. And then uh, on the application level, we can authenticate and decide which client can read, which client can, uh, can write, and call methods, and so on. And we can also take this to the user level so in addition to the client, we can also uh, identify the different users that have given their credentials on the client application. In PubSub UDP, uh, we need to divert to an external uh, component called security key server that will be able to share the security keys between these components so that they can uh, encrypt data uh, that is going from publishers to the subscribers. In MQTT, we can use the uh, security mechanisms provided by the MQTT brokers. Uh, they can support transport level security over SSL by default, and they can also use uh, broker authentication to, to define uh, username, passwords, or user security uh, certificates that, that are used to uh, identify the, the applications that connect. So both publishers and subscribers connect to the MQTT broker with this. But 
the publishers have no way to understand and limit uh, which subscribers connect to the broker and which subscribers get data. So these are the basic, basic differences. Many applications will in practice use both models because they have their, both, uh, their own benefits. Uh, we can have a publisher server that is a combination of a server and a publisher and uh, a subscriber client. Uh, and this, uh, in this case, the client, uh, subscriber client can use the client functionality to configure the server, for example, or to browse the address space to find out uh, what's, what's available. And then it can uh, subscribe to the data that is being published by the publisher server. We can also have a publisher client that uh, converts to the client server communication to PubSub, for example, or the subscriber server, which uh, converts it the other way around. Many applications can have uh, all of these uh, functionalities, and, uh, and with those means, we get the most efficient uh, options and, and uh, uh, combinations of, of functionalities in, in them. So as a summary, uh, OPC UA client server has uh, the bidirectional services that uh, that stand out, but it's only moderately uh, scalable, which is maybe uh, a drawback, whereas the PubSub model uh, enables better scalability, but uh, on the other hand is uh, so far only unidirectional communication. We have the UDP version, which uh, provides the maximum throughput of data, and we have the MQTT, which is very flexible on uh, this kind of more unreliable networks and, and deliver it to the cloud, especially. But both are required, both are useful, and uh, security is always available. So uh, you have all the options that you need. And uh, I hope with this presentation, you got a better understanding with, uh, with the differences between these crucial technologies. Thank you.